Hi YouTube, I'm Maimon, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. This is the last part of how to bleed your engine cooling system for a 2004 to 2009 Toyota Prius. So you recall that last video, we bled the air bubbles out of the coolant heat storage tank, which is on the left over here. In this, in this part, we're going to bleed the air bubbles out of the heater core in the back. And this is sort of a sort of diagram to see the placement. The coolant heat storage tank is right here, and the heater core is in the back. So let's just get right into how to do it before we uh, before we explain why we're doing it. So first off, we're going to look at the radiator, uh, the neck. We're going to take this cap off, and I think it's you simply uh, twist, you push and twist, and then there should be a certain position where you can take it out. There you go. So set that aside, so probably so that it doesn't fall. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a funnel. Uh, you should probably use a bigger funnel. Uh, like this one. This is only $3 at Walmart. Uh, but we're going to use this one because as we're going, we can just refill the coolant. And what you want to do is you want to uh, fill it up to at least uh, 2 inches above the radiator. So we have our coolant right here. We're probably going to fill it all the way, like to right here, uh, ju just in case. Um, here we go. You probably also don't want to make sure it's a tight one so that none of the coolant overflows when you put it in. Make sure I hold it steady. So up here, and then what we're going to do next is focus our attention to the bleeder valve. Now, let me just watch to see how much we need to put. You can see that there is an air bubble escaping down there actually, so it's not, not truly tight. Okay, so after, so once it's all the way down, we're going to f add more coolant. Okay. See, still more air bubbles. Uh, I'm sure that adding more coolant won't uh, change that. Alright, so there's still going to be a bit more air bubbles. I guess we didn't bleed the system completely. Or maybe because we ran the engine before. Uh, but anyway, after we put the coolant in, we're going to turn our attention to the bleeder valve. Now, you don't have to take off the radiator uh, panel here. Uh, this is just so we could show you, uh, and also because we're doing some other stuff with this uh, bracket. So this is the bleeder valve right here, and here is, that. that's a aftermarket part, the whole radiator. This is a genuine radiator, so let me handle this gently. So this is what the actual ra uh, radiator and bleeder valve look like. You can see on the aftermarket part that there is no protrusion coming out the side. However, on the genuine part, there's a protrusion on the side that has a hole in it. I probably... Actually, I, I shouldn't take that out. You can hook a uh, strap. You can hook a hose up to this protrusion, and then you can feed it back into the funnel so that when you bleed, uh, this coolant just goes back into the funnel. So, how do you bleed? So that the way the way that the bleeder valve works is that uh, the the way to open the bleeder valve is to use a uh, I think six millimeter hex right here, and as you can see, it's a hex shaped uh, hole. And the way to open the uh, bleeder valve is when you open it, uh, you want to spin counterclockwise. Now, when you spit, when you open the bleeder valve, fluid is going to come out. When you open it just a tiny bit, so slightly, only gas will come out. If you open it uh, too much or all the way, then liquid will come out. So uh, since we want, since all we want to do is bleed the. Uh, bleed the air bubbles out, we don't have to fill it out all the way. So I'm just going to open it. Uh, one turn should suffice, and if not, uh, just just uh, turn it until any liquid comes out, and once you see that liquid come out, just spin it back, and then you should be okay. So uh, like I said before, you don't have to uh, take off the bracket, so you can have it like this, and you should still be able to reach it. So when you when it's like this, just do one turn. Before we continue onward, we have to have a precaution here. It's very important. You can see that this here says, never open the valve when hot. So never open this bleeder valve when it's hot or the coolant is hot because when it's hot... Oh, by the way, these bleeder valves, are these tops are made out of plastic. So when it gets hot, it's gonna, going to expand. When it expands, it makes it uh, harder to uh, loosen or open the valves. And if you try to open these valves while it's hot and expanded, it's probably going to strip the, uh, the bleeder valve. 
If you do strip the bleeder valve, uh, it's okay. They're around six or seven dollars at the dealer. Our next step now is going to be turning on the engine. So there are two methods to doing this, and the first of them is have someone else go inside the car, turn it on, and have their foot on the gas pedal. So here's the method that I talked about. So what you want to do is uh, have someone else uh, sit in the driver's seat. What you want to do is press the uh, brake pedal and turn, uh, press the power button. This turns the engine on. And what you want them to do is you want to, them to press the gas pedal, pre pedal and hold it while you're bleeding the system. Now, don't worry about flooring this system into the ground because the car is designed so that it doesn't go over 3,000 RPM. Uh, and by the way, they're going to have to hold the gas pedal the entire uh, bleeding. The second method, uh, which is the easier method, and it's also better if you're alone, is to turn the car into inspection or maintenance mode. And we have our own dedicated video on how to do that, so go check that out. I'll probably link it in the description down below. Uh, but inspection mode, what it does is it allows the car to run continuously uh, without the engine turning off by itself. Because uh, normally, the engine, when it runs, will turn off after a while. So I'm just going to turn the car into inspection mode right now. So, fully release it twice. All right. Okay, there we go. So right now the car is in maintenance mode. As you can see, none of my uh, body parts are on the pedals. And the car is going to be running continuously as we bleed. So let's go. Alright, so if you're working it in a garage, which would probably happen if you're working during the winter, just make sure that you uh, get your exhaust fumes outside. Uh, so either open the garage door entirely or have it go through an air duct. Uh, because you don't want the exhaust fumes to be trapped in with you. Uh, I think it's called monoxide poisoning if you, if you don't, if you don't uh, eject the exhaust fumes. Uh, so just make sure you somehow get the exhaust gases out. All right, you can see now that we've been turned the engine on, you can see air bubbles are coming out from the funnel. And now at this stage, what we're gonna do is, so when the engine turns on, the water inside the engine will circulate, and when it reaches a certain temperature, the thermostat will open. And when the thermostat opens, this hot, this wa this hot water will circulate around the entire system. So as it circulates, uh, and you turn the uh, heater core on, which you can do by turning the heat on and, and then the fan, when you turn the heat and fan on, the heater core is going to turn on and the water is going to circulate through it. When it circulates to the heater core, it's going to take the air bubbles that are in the heater core and it's going to uh, pass it into the flow. And when it goes through the flow, it's going to eventually end into the radiator. And before it goes into the radiator, it's going to pass by this bleeder valve. Any air bubbles that pass from the heater core to here will be ejected out. And then any uh, air bubbles that leave, the coolant in the funnel should take its place. So now we're going to turn the fan and the heater on. So let me go and show you how to do that. All right, so we're in the inside of the car now. So we're going to look at our dashboard and we want to press uh, climate control. It says climate on it. And you can see this is the control for the uh, HVAC system, or the heating system. And uh, that's not a good display. The top is, okay. So when it's in maintenance mode, there's going to be a big black bar here. Uh, don't worry. This says temp. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the, the fan to highest and then we're going to set the temp to highest it should say high and then what you're going to do right now it's venting to the front what you want to do is you want to vent it here so that you can feel it okay so i can feel it right now it's a bit warm all right so now we should be able to see the results of what we did all right so now we're at the front of the car and as you can see there are only a little amount of water bubble, uh, air bubbles coming out. And the reason for that is because the engine itself hasn't reached the right temperature yet. So not the, so the coolant hasn't started to circulate throughout the system yet. Uh, however, when it does, what you want to do is you want to take the beater valve and play with it a little bit until all the air bubbles come out. Now, well, so at this point, even when you open the beater valve the entire way, liquid won't come out because it still hasn't circulated throughout the system because the thermostat hasn't opened. So uh, just keep in mind, don't open it, don't open it the entire way, uh, just open it a little bit. So anyway, 
uh, a good way to tell when your system is, uh, when the coolant is circulating is that this big hose right here is actually connected to the radiator. You can tell when the coolant is circulating when this hose is hot to the touch. Right now it's not as hot, so that means that the coolant isn't circulating yet. Alright, so uh, I need to, this, this hose by the way, not this one, I, mean, I know I touched it like this, it should just be this one. Uh, another hose that you can check out is this one that's on the right side of the radiator, uh, down here. Uh, this should also be hot if the uh, coolant is circulating. You should also be able to hear the fan when the coolant is circulating. In order to speed up or expedite the process, uh, because currently the engine is running at 1000 RPM, uh, you can actually floor the gas. Now, right now, uh, we're going to try to feel the uh, heat. It's a bit warm, but not entirely hot, uh, because we set the temperature to the hottest. So what you can do is you can floor the gas for a couple of minutes, maybe five, until it finally reaches the needed temperature uh, that you can feel. So just, ju just for sake of example, because it's going to heat up naturally while we're doing the video, uh, but when you when you floor the gas, it's going to run at 3,000 RPM and therefore speed up the process. And like I said before, don't worry about uh, flooring it into the ground uh, because it's uh, designed to run at a max of 3,000 RPM. I also mentioned in my video about the inspection mode, uh, don't drive the car uh, while it's in inspection mode because you're going to ruin it if you do. We're back at the front and when you look in the funnel, you see that the water level has decreased. That means that a bit of uh, coolant is coming down and replacing the air bubbles that were in the uh, system. Now you might be asking, why can't I drive the car instead of putting it into a maintenance mode in order to heat the engine up? Uh, first off, how are you going to bleed the system? And then if your answer to that is, why don't I drive the car and then put it, bring it home to bleed it? My, the answer would be, well, the goal of bleeding is to get air bubbles out of the system. If you're driving the car uh, while it has air bubbles in the system, those air bubbles are going to expand and cause the engine to overheat. That is the exact opposite of what you want to do. And by driving before, uh, before you take the air bubbles out, you're actually risking your uh, car's life, I guess. So putting the car in maintenance mode is a much more safer and much more smarter way of going about doing things. All right, so when we feel this hose right here, it's a bit hot right now, so when you when you loosen the uh, 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 bleeder valve right now, just a little, you're going to see that some air bubbles will come to the top. And it, it comes up intermittently, so it might not uh, occur right now. Uh, I'm just saying right now that maybe it's not correct to, maybe it's not as apt to describe it as bleeding. Maybe it's better to say it's burping because the air is being burped out of the system, right? All right, so I guess while we're waiting for the air bubbles to pop up, we're going to keep the uh, camera focused on it, probably. So, I should mention, you don't need to jack up the car up at all uh, when you're bleeding the system for the heater core. Because you're going to see here, if we jack the car up from the passenger side, then it will be tilted, and this side will be raised higher than this side. And if this side is lower, then it's not just gas that's going to be come out, uh, coming out, it's going to also be liquid. So that means that uh, it's not necessary to jack the car up. I mean, you could also jack it up from the driver's side, but there's really no any additional purpose. All right, so you can see that a little bit of coolant came out right there. It's the pink liquid. You look down here. The water level has decreased dramatically in order to fill the coolant that has escaped. So what you want to do is you just want to tighten it a little bit uh, so that no more coolant comes out. Uh, if it's really if it's really low, you probably want to refill the coolant. You don't want the engine to uh, run just a bit dry. What we're doing by having this funnel with coolant in it is we're having uh, coolant, uh, we're having this uh, above all the other parts. And by doing that, any air bubbles that are in the system will be forced out. And with the help of gravity, the coolant will go down and replace those air bubbles. Uh, also note that when you're filling the coolant, don't fill it too much because this uh, coolant will fluctuate up and down uh, as the system works its magic. So you should be bleeding for at least, uh, it's, it's not really uh, exact, but I'd say at least 10, maybe 20 minutes. And we've already had the engine running for about 15, 20 minutes. So right now, we're going to test if there, if we need, if we still need to bleed by lowering the temperature. Uh, no, by turning off the fan. So what we're gonna do is go to climate, turn, uh, turn the fan to low, and we should listen for any glopping sounds. 
the glopping sound would would be the sound of air bubbles that are still in the heater core and I don't really hear any glopping sounds but if you do hear any glopping sounds that means that you still need to continue bleeding all right so now the temperature is actually hot so now we're going to go into the front and talk a bit more all right so now after our 15 20 minutes are done we're going to we're going to turn the engine off but before we do that we're going to close the bleeder valve now we're going to close the bleeder valve but not completely tighten it so so just before it has any resistance Okay, so that's just before it has any resistance. And now we're also gonna keep our funnel here. We're gonna fill it just to about here. Then when we're gonna turn the engine off, and by turning the engine off, it's gonna cool down. And as the engine cools down, this coolant will be sucked into the system because when the engine works and it heats off, the coolant is actually pushed out of the system into the reservoir. So logically speaking, when you, when you cool the engine down, it should be uh, pulling, it, uh, pulling coolant into the system. So that's why we have this uh, coolant here. Just keep in mind that this might not be enough coolant. Uh, you still might need to refill, you still might need to add more uh, coolant after, uh, after you're done. And that's why we use a, a bigger funnel because it has, it's able to hold more coolant. All right, so I'm gonna come back uh, in soon, but I'm gonna turn the engine off. So the reason that we don't tighten this uh, bleeder valve that's, that's the sound of the, uh, I think the all the water going into the coolant heat storage tank if I recall correctly. Alright, so the reason that we're, we don't over tighten, or just tighten in general, the bleeder valve is... Oh, so you can see air bubbles is coming up. So that means that the coolant is being sucked in. So the reason that we close the bleeder valve is because when we cool the engine down, we want to suck the coolant not the air. And if the bleeder valve is open, then it's just going to suck in the air. So that's why we make sure it's closed. Uh, it's not too tightened. The reason that we don't over tighten the bleeder screw is because as the engine cools down, then the... Uh, actually, so first we're going to begin with the bleeder valve. So this is a representation of the bleeder valve. So as the engine cools down, since this is metal, and metal uh, expands when it's hot, it's going to actually shrink. So when it's hot, it's easily it's easy to screw in the uh, bleeder screw. However, uh, if you tighten it too much, when it uh, when the bleeder valve cools down, it's going to shrink and it's gonna completely grip the bleeder screw and make it almost impossible to take this out. And that's actually what happened to this uh, bleeder screw. So you can see that it's stripped actually. So we try to spin it; it doesn't grip at all. And that's probably because the old owner uh, tried to. Uh, take it out uh, even when it was impossible. So that's why you don't over tighten the uh, bleeder screw. All right, so we're gonna leave this car to cool for around three to four hours. Then we're gonna come back and take it from there. All right, we're back. It's been around four hours and the engine is cold. Uh, I can feel it and it's really cold right now. And when we look in the funnel, we can see that all the coolant that we put in is completely uh, empty. So we're gonna take this out and look at the neck. And it's somewhere down the neck. All right, so at this point, we're going to top it off, put the radiator cap back on. Uh, maybe uh, we're got also going to put some coolant in the reservoir at the minimum fill line, which we marked with marker. And then after that, we're going to take the car for uh, a bit of a drive. And then when we come back, uh, we're just going to see if we need to add more coolant. Uh, so earlier in uh, fixing the car, I explained that we used about two. Uh, we used two uh, one-gallon cans of coolant to fill the uh, to refill the coolant. And right now, it looks like we used uh, this is four plus two and a half, which is six and a half uh, quarts of coolant. And that's along the lines of what we are ex uh, expecting. So when we come back, uh, we shouldn't have to fill any more coolant. But we'll see. All right, so we're gonna add uh, coolant right now using the syringe. So one thing I should mention is that. Okay, don't want to add some air bubbles. Let me just do that again. So one thing that uh, Toyota recommends when you're uh, when dealing with coolant is that you use the genuine uh, article Toyota SLLC, which is super long life coolant uh, when uh, to put in your Priuses. Now this is a Valvoline uh, brand. That's around fifteen dollars at Walmart, but the genuine Toyota uh, SLLC is around thirty dollars at the dealer. Uh, the genuine article. 
Last, they say that it lasts around 50,000 miles. So let me just fill this. And now we should be able to put the uh, cap back on, which is right here. This is what it looks like. I'm going to set this aside for now so we don't spill it. And just take notes of these notches. Okay. They go in these uh, holes. Press down and twist, and then they should be secure. This is what it looks like uh, when it's uh, completely on, though. All right. All right, so now we're going to fill the reservoir up to the minimum, and we're going to take this cap off in order to do it. This isn't any twist cap. It's just a simple uh, pull-off cap. It might take a decent about, uh, amount of strength, but eventually you'll, you'll get it off. So we're going to take our coolant and we fill it. So I'm going to... I actually, I probably shouldn't shine the light so you guys can probably see it. But we're going to fill to that minimum level. Oh. Actually, I probably need to see it better. Okay. Oh shoot, there's a lot that we need to add actually. I mean, it's alright if we go above the minimum, so there should be no problem with just using a funnel. Just gonna put this under here so it doesn't get in the way. And just making sure we look at the level. And it's right, uh, right there. there. You can see a bit of the pink liquid. So let me just fill it, and you'll, you should see the level of the pink liquid slowly start to rise. And it's at the marker right now. Just a bit more to make sure. And there we go. Oh wait, it's just a bit above, but that's all right. So now we're done with filling the coolant. We're gonna put the coolant reservoir cap back on. This one's also just a simple push it in. Make sure that's on tightly. And then let's take it for a test drive. All right, so the reason that we fill the coolant reservoir is because when the engine uh, starts working, it's going to start heating up and it's going to cause a, a buildup of high pressure in the system that will push coolant into the reservoir. So when the uh, engine cools down after you're done driving, it's going to uh, create a low pressure area where the coolant from the reservoir is going to be drawn back in. However, if there's not enough uh, coolant in the reservoir or you didn't put enough coolant in the radiator to begin with, then instead the uh, cooling system will draw in air. And that's the exact opposite of what we want. Uh, I also just want you guys to note that this system is partially self-bleeding. I mean, like, if there's a small air bubble, then eventually that will go away. And that's why we add just a little bit of coolant. Alright, so just uh, wanted to add this on uh, towards the end of the video. It's completely optional and not necessary at all. But in order to help with uh, bleeding, uh, this is mainly for the manual method and not the air lift system uh, when you're using the funnel. Uh, there's another bleeding point, which is the engine drain plug, and we're going to look at this diagram right here. The uh, engine drain plug would be up here, and these two uh, hoses right here have clamps on them. Now, what you can do is you can loosen these clamps, and that way, uh, air bubbles will escape. So, when you loosen these clamps, make sure that you don't loosen them all the way or uh, uh, disconnect the hoses, because then the liquid would come out uh, as well. So this acts as an alternative bleeding point uh, beside the bleeder valve. Alright, so my dad actually has tried this method out before. Uh, like I said before, he has bled the system around 10 times. Uh, not because he's uh, bad at it, because bad at it, but because he's had to replace so many parts in order to solve this air bubble problem. And one tip he has for you guys is that if you if your car overheats and from your from the and you turn on the heating, from the passenger side, if you hear any gur gurgling noise like uh, so it sounds like someone sucking a straw. Uh, then there is probably there are probably air bubbles in the system. So it could mean that uh, you just didn't bleed right, or that a component or a part needs to be replaced. In our case, uh, the part of the system that needed to be replaced was I think it was the auxiliary water heater pump. We actually found that that wasn't working as efficiently as possible. We have a video on that, so go check that out if you want to. But that's one of the components that we had to replace in order to get the air bubbles out of our system. So, uh, I guess this is the end of the video. You know, I enjoy making these videos, uh, especially because my dad teaches me a lot about this car. And, like I said, 
I'm not sure if I said it in this video, but uh, Toyota Priuses are notorious for uh, being difficult to get air bubbles out of, and because these cooling systems are fairly, fair, fairly and very complex, I learned a lot from this. So thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Please like, rate, comment, and subscribe, and look at other videos on I and Iman, especially the Toyota Prius videos. And I'll see you next time. Signing out. Peace.